Assalamualaikum, I am Liana from group 10 and my group will be presenting the oral manifestation of diabetes mellitus. My group member uh, consists of Zahra, Atira, Hazim and also Nadia. What is diabetes mellitus? Diabetes mellitus is a chronic metabolic disease that characterized by hyperglycemia due to either a deficiency of insulin secretion or resistance to the action of insulin or both. As you can see in this uh, diagram, uh, around 422 million adults uh, have diabetes and based on WHO statistic, around 1.5 million that are caused by diabetes also. Uh, there is a three types of diabetes. Type 1 diabetes is where the body does not produce enough insulin uh, the second type of diabetes, uh, which pro body uh, produce insulin but cannot uh, be used uh, by body cells, and uh, the third uh, types of diabetes is gestation diabetes, uh, which a temporary condition of pregnancy. Diabetes mellitus can affect the our body system, but how? Hyperglycemia in diabetes is thought to cause dysfunction of the immune response, which uh, fails to control the spread of embedding pathogen in diabetic subjects. Therefore, diabetic uh, subjects are known to be more susceptible to infection. Uh, while the chronic hyperglycemia uh, will lead to different complications in various regions of the body, including the oral cavity. The impact of elevated blood glucose has on oral health that it will simultaneously weaken the immune system and provide more food for the bacteria that attack teeth and also gum. The possible mechanism that may be related to oral complication of diabetic uh, including impair of neutrophil function, increased uh, collagenous activity, and also a reduction in collagen synthesis, microangiopathy, and also neuropathy. The intensity of diabetic complications is usually proportional to the degree and duration of hyperglycemia. Now we move on to management of diabetic patients in the dental clinic. First, medical history. Then they should aware with patients' medication, dosage, and consultation. Patients need to take medication and eat before the treatment. Second, schedule of visits. Morning appointment is advisable for diabetic patients, so it does not coincide with big activity. Third, blood glucose monitoring. Before beginning the dental treatment, the patient's blood glucose level should be below than 70 mg per deciliter. Moving on to the next slide. We will start discussing on how diabetes mellitus can affect oral health. First, salivary hypofunction and xerostomia. Second, dental caries. Third, poor wound healing. Fourth, periodontal disease. Fifth, oral candidiasis. And the last one is taste impairment. So how does diabetes mellitus affect our health? Firstly, it causes salivary hypofunction and xerostomia. A decrease in submandibular nitric oxide, tetrahydrobiopterins, protein expression, which is a development of hyposalivation in diabetes induced xerostomia. It causes hyposalivation, which decreases the salivary flow rate, which this allows the accumulation of the bacteria. And it also causes low bicarbonate level, which then will cause the salivary pH to be acidic, as we all know that the bicarbonate is an important buffer in our oral cavity to decrease the acidic environment. It also causes enlargement of the salivary gland, especially the parotid gland, which then alters the function and secretion of the gland. It causes dehydration in the di um, diabetic patient also, and increases their thirst and cause increase in water intake. Other than that, it also causes xerostomia, which we all know is called dry mouth, which are common in females and causes halitosis, which is bad breath. Next of all, this also causes dental caries because the glucose leakage into the oral cavity will facilitate the growth of the aciduric and the acidogenic bacteria. It also causes hyposalivation. This is due to the insulin deficiency of diabetic patients, 
and reduces the slivery flow rate and also lowers the buffer capacity. It, an elevated slivery glucose level, it will affect the microorganism's activity. Nextly, as we all know in diabetic, diabetic patients, they all have poor wound healing. This is because the enzyme and hormones that are produced by the body in the reaction of the high blood glucose level can shut down the effectiveness of the immune system. And the common complication of diabetic patients are neuropathy, which is nerve damage. This is when the patients are less sensitive to pain, when there is no pain to alert them if the wound is getting worse or infected. Other than that, inflammation stage, it lasts too long, which become chronic as in chronic situation is prolonged. And in chronic wounds, the balance between producing and degrading collagen is lost. Last but not least, in elevated blood glucose, it causes decreased red blood cell function, limits the leukocyte's effectiveness, which then can't fight infection sufficiently. As we all know that the leukocytes, which are the white blood cells, are important in fighting infections. Next, we're going to proceed to the fourth oral manifestation of diabetes mellitus, which is periodontal disease. Periodontal disease are mainly the result of infection and inflammation of the gums and bone that surround and support the teeth. It starts as a plaque in this gingivitis, which is reversible and can develop into periodontitis, which is irreversible if untreated. Diabetic patients have a greater risk of getting infection. They are less able to fight bacteria invading or naturally occurring in the mouth. It causes blood glucose to become rise, called hyperglycemia, that eventually influence the progression of periodontal disease. Individuals with diabetes are three times greater risk in developing periodontal disease than without diabetes. Diabetes increases inflammation in periodontal tissue with higher level of inflammatory mediators such as tumor necrosis factor alpha and interleukin-1 beta. The gingiva of the diabetic patient with periodontal disease will become red, soft, swollen, white and also shiny. The complications of the periodontal disease are to loss and dissemination of infection. The fifth oral manifestation of diabetes mellitus is oral candidiasis, or known as oral thrush. It is a fungal infection caused by a yeast, which is a type of fungi called candida. Candida albicans are most commonly causing oral candidiasis. It appears as white or pack, patchy blood on tongue and painless until scratch or scrap. Diabetes is a cause of immunosuppression that weakens the immune system. It can lead to less competition of candida and cause candida overgrowth uncontrollably. Several factors can increase colonization of candida species in the oral cavity, such as xerostomia, which reduces the salivary flow and decreases the oral pH that promote oral carriage of the candida species. Oral candidiasis causes this impairment, angular cellulitis, and difficulty in swallowing. Six oral manifestations of diabetes mellitus is this impairment. These disturbances like agusia, hypogusia, and dysgusia have been associated with diabetes mellitus. This alteration was more common in uncontrolled diabetics than in controlled diabetics. Hyperglycemia induced a concentration-dependent impairment of sweet taste perception in diabetic patients as the result of an adaptation of the sensory cell to elevated circulating concentration of glucose. High blood glucose can lead to nerve damage called diabetic neuropathy. Neuropathy involving these nerve tracts and microangiopathy involving these parts that are responsible for the decreased taste sensation among the diabetic patients. Besides, defects in the taste receptor may be responsible in newly diagnosed diabetes mellitus without complications. Assalamualaikum and hi, my name is Nadia and I will proceed with the last part of this presentation which is the case report. So the title of this case report is Type 2 Diabetes Mellitus with Oral Abscess and Obesity Class 1. It is from a journal called Review of Primary Care Practice and Education, and it was written by Fat Guru Richman and Agana Gayatri in the year 2019. So this slide basically shows the first two pages of the case report. 
So now I will briefly explain about the medical history of the case report. So a 62-year-old female, Mrs. L, was internally referred to the general clinic from the dentist clinic within Puskesmas Nusa Peninda 1, which is at Indonesia, with the diagnosis of dental abscess in the first right molar. The patient was experiencing pulsating pain and swelling of the right upper side of the jaw, with the pain radiating to her right ear for the last two days. Two weeks beforehand, the patient complained of her upper teeth being sensitive and she felt a shooting pain whenever she was eating something hot or cold. This pain radiated to her upper jaw. Her general diet consists of at least four large meals a day with the dominance of rice in every meal. She also denied experiencing unusual fatigue. Mrs. L runs an eatery with the help of household assistant and she usually sleeps at 7 p.m and wakes at around 3 a.m. to start preparations for her uh, eatery. The patient is an elderly overweight lady with uncontrolled diet, little physical activity, and an active smoker. She is also from a Javanese ethnic group. On her physical examination, her blood pressure shows 140 over 90 millimeter mercury, which indicates a high blood pressure. Her heart rate shows 90 times per minute, which is normal. Her respiration rate shows 80 times per minute, which is also normal. Her temperature shows 37.5 degrees Celsius, which is, shows a high temperature, which uh, lead to fever. Her body mass index, BMI, is 31.2, which indicates obesity class 1. And her fasting plasma glucose, which is FPG, shows 400 milligrams per deciliter, which indicates hyperglycemia. So a diagnosis was made, which is uh, she was diagnosed with diabetes type 2 and obesity class 1 with dental abscess. And the diagnosis was made based on the patient history, physical and lab examination. The patient in this case had never been diagnosed with diabetes and she is not aware of its risks and complications. So these are all the signs and symptoms that the patient had. First of all, uh, looking at the oral cavity, she sensed that there was a rotting smell in her mouth and there was a pulsating pain and swelling of the right upper side of the jaw. The pain radiates to her right ear for the last two days. Her vision also starts to become blurry a year ago and she also denied the classic triad of diabetes, which is polyuria, excessive urination, polyphagia, excessive appetite, and polydipsia, excessive thirst. And she also had a tingling sensation of her fingers and toes. She also had a fever and a general headache. So there are a few approaches for the treatment for this patient. First of all is the education. So education was designed to promote compliance, utilizing strategies for both motiv motivational and behavioral to necessitate change in the patient. So the physician must educate the patient by eating a healthy diet, increasing the physical activities, and to all and to always monitor the blood, her blood glucose level so that it always remains normal. Next is the medical nutrition therapy. So there are several types of food that needs to be limited, uh, such as um, simple sugar, such as sugar protein containing high cholesterol and a source of fat containing fatty acids saturation. So in this case, the patient must eat a healthy diet. And I will show uh, an example of a table, a sample menu a day for the patient in the next slide. Next is physical activity. The patient must carry out regular physical exercise uh, three or four times a week for 30 minutes in the form of aerobic physical exercises such as walking, cycling, jogging, and swimming as this will increase her cardiovascular rate. And next is uh, in terms of pharmacological approach. So a drug combination of metronidazole, glibenclamide, and metformin was given to her to control her blood glucose level. And uh, if the patient have dizziness, she was given paracetamol for 500 milligrams. So this is what I said just now, which is a sample menu a day for the patient. So uh, as you can see in the table here, uh, during the morning, she has to consume white bread with peanut butter, boiled eggs, lettuce or tomato salad. And during noon, she has to, read, uh, she has to eat rice, meat stew, fried tempeh, pechel and orange. And during night, she has to eat rice, pepper's fish, chow tahu, 
salted kale and apple. Note that the food uh, in this uh, ta table is consists of uh, Ind Indonesian food. That's why it has pechel, tempeh, and so on. And her snacking also has to be in terms of a healthy food, which is apple, papaya pudding, uh, crackers, or fruit. So below here is the uh, case report reference in case if you want to read more about it. And these are the references that we have obtained for uh, throughout this presentation. So yeah, that's about it. Thank you so much for uh, tuning in. I hope all of you are having a great day. Assalamualaikum.